right, what's up guys? Today I'll show you a supernatural horror film, Ouija Board. Spoiler ahead, watch out and take care. The movie begins with a pretty student, nicknamed Beauty, doing the Ouija Board game specifically on a desk number 29 that she found in storage. With two other friends, she performs the ritual to stop bullies from tormenting them for the rest of their high school. They admit that they're scared, and Beauty gives them a chance to leave. They swallow their fear and continue. Before they start, she cautions them not to open their eyes during the seance, so that the spirit won't enter their body. Beauty then leads the ritual, since she's the one who knows what to do. Despite her own warning, it's Beauty who opens her eyes during the ritual. She hears someone scratching on the blackboard. In fear, she turns towards the sound, but finds nothing. When she looks back at her hand holding the pen, there's another hand. She looks at her side and finds nothing. When she glances towards the other side, she screams out, seeing a pale face staring back at her. The next day, a student comes in early for her class, and finds the burned body of another student slumped on the desk. The police are called. Late to class, Beauty runs into them out in the hallway. The school supervisor takes notice of her. He scolds her for being late and then leads her to her class. In the classroom, Beauty's friends are being harassed by bullies. It seems the dead student was a friend of theirs. They accuse them of celebrating the fact that she's dead. The head bully warns them to stop hanging out with Beauty. As Beauty and the supervisor enter the room, he orders everyone to take a seat, as one of Beauty's friends informs her of the body found that day. The new art teacher receives news about the bully who burned to death. The police have written it off as suicide, but the class advisor, who knows well of the student, shares that she doesn't seem to be the type to be suicidal. In her first class, art teacher does the customary roll call. She yells for number 29 who is in suck. The class gasps and looks at each other. She repeats herself, and someone answers. She reprimands the student for speaking too softly. Everyone screams and runs away from the classroom. Beauty then informs art teacher that there's no number 29 in class and no in suck as well. When art teacher glances back down at her booklet, she realizes that there really is no name written on there. As the camera pans closer to art teacher, we find a ghost hanging behind her, which Beauty also sees. She gasps. On their way home, Beauty talks to her friends and admits that she thinks this is the start of the Ouija board curse. At first, her friends are in denial, but she points out that if it wasn't for this curse, why would the student kill herself? A group of bullies comes their way. They seem to have it out for Beauty, insulting her and the fact that she came from Seoul. They warn the group not to tattle on them and to get ready for a tough school year. The class advisor brings our teacher to his friend named Psychic, who is a talented fortune teller. Our teacher asks him about the 29th desk and how she found out that 30 years ago, it was the seat of a certain insuck. The class advisor plays it off and tells her that every school has a ghost story. He is about to tell her more about insuck and her mother, but Psychic finally arrives, drenched. The class advisor then reassures art teacher that it's only ghost stories. The next day, another student goes missing, and nobody knows what happened to her. Yuri's friends turn to her, and she asks if this particular student was the second one on their list. They nod. Outside, the janitor finds the missing student's burnt body. The school calls the police, and the autopsy also shows that the student pulled a plastic bag over her head, poured lighter fluid all over it, then lit herself on fire. Her cause of death is suffocation from the poisonous gas, as well as a heart attack from fear. They confirm that the fingerprints found on the lighter were her own. They also write it off as suicide. It's the same way the first student killed herself. Curious, the class advisor goes to sit on the 29th desk. He contemplates for a moment, when a hand out of nowhere grabs his ankle. He panics and looks down, but finds nothing there. When he straightens up, he finds one of Beauty's close friends, who spills about the Ouija board curse they did. She blames it all on Beauty. After a run-in with the bullies, Beauty gets home really late. Her mother meets her at the gate and yells at her for being late, talking about how her father was angry the evening before. Once they're both settled inside, Beauty asks her mother why her father was angry, since she couldn't remember anything. She explains that Beauty came home at 1 in the morning, and when her father asked her where she's been, she told him that it was none of his business. She also tells Beauty that it wasn't the first time she came home late, admitting that she came home late the night before that as well. Beauty excuses herself, but then turns back to her mother to ask about Insuk. She tells her that she thinks her mother went to school with her, but the mother tells her she can't remember. The class advisor gets calls from his students' parents, telling him that their children are not feeling well. A total of seven students will be absent that day. The supervisor asks for their names and numbers, so he can call the family and ask. As they're talking, a student runs into the teacher's lounge, screaming about something bad happening on the school grounds. We then find Beauty eye to eye with another student, one of her bullies. In front of everyone, the bully places a plastic bag over her head and pours lighter fluid all over herself. 
Art teacher then sees a hand encircling the bully and guiding the lighter to her body. The bully sets herself on fire. Everybody screams in horror, unable to do anything. Beauty faints soon after. That evening, Beauty visits another bully of hers. She calls out softly for her. The other girl doesn't want to face her, but swallows her fear and looks out the window. We find Beauty on the street. She doesn't seem to be herself. She's encouraging her bully to come out and talk to her. The bully refuses, and Beauty taunts her about being scared. Furious, the bully threatens to deal with her at school instead, and promises to light her head on fire. This encounter bothers the bully enough for her to pack her things up and run away from home. She drops her bag and screams that she'll never return to the village. However, as she goes to pick up her things, she finds she's unable to do so. When she opens it up, she finds a body inside. It crawls out of the bag and holds on tight to her legs. Unable to move, a truck appears out of nowhere and hits the bully straight on. At school, Beauty is surrounded by her classmates. Everyone blames her for the death of the bullies. They take hold of her and place a plastic bag on her head, while another one with a lighter approaches her. Fortunately, art teacher and the class advisor arrive in time to save her. While resting at the nurse's clinic, art teacher visits Beauty and asks her why she studies her so much during their class. Beauty then reveals that she sees something hanging around art teacher ever since she called in Suck's name during their roll call. She asks her what it was, and Beauty whispers that it was a ghost. During a village meeting, some village officials reveal that everyone's worried, as they believe that Beauty has brought down a curse after calling for Insuk's name. We find that Beauty's mother used to be a classmate of Insuk. The commissioner suggests that the family must be driven out of town, if it's true that they're the cause of the curse. The village head asks if they're going to sacrifice another mother and daughter. The commissioner argues that he's doing this not for himself, but for the good of the entire village. Later, Beauty's mother argues with someone over the phone, refusing to leave the village. After hanging up the phone, she turns around and finds a very pale Beauty standing behind her. Beauty confronts her mother for lying about Insuk. She asks if Insuk was tormented like her. The mother refuses to acknowledge this. Beauty then asks her to send her away instead. However, the mother leans closer and tells her that no matter what happens, they can never leave the village. In a flashback, it turns out Beauty's mother had befriended Insuk when she didn't know about the girl's story and that she was treated like an outcast. Insuk explained that she's treated differently because people are afraid of someone peculiar, which then turns to hate, no matter if it doesn't hurt them. At a school health check, a doctor diagnoses Insuk as having glaucoma despite passing her eye exam. The doctor's not sure how she was able to answer correctly, but the unnatural look in her eyes and the fact that she can't seem to focus on things prove that there's something wrong with them. This seems to be the start of her schoolmate's torture of her. One time during class, one of Insuk's bullies looks over at her. Insuk meets her bully's eyes and whispers something to her. As if hypnotized, the girl stands up to walk over one of the windows. She opens it up and then jumps. Back in the present, the class advisor brings Beauty to Psychic, hoping to find out more about this ghost who possessed her body. During the hypnotic session, Psychic is taken back to the nights Beauty can't remember. It turns out, she was there each time her bullies died. She didn't touch them, but instead hypnotized them to kill themselves. As Psychic stares at Beauty's figure, she finds both Beauty and Insuk looking back at her. Beauty loses consciousness, and Psychic discloses to the class advisor what she found out. The bullies were all dying through hypnotism. Psychic divulges that Beauty's been fighting off Insuk's spirit, which is why the ghost doesn't have complete control of her. The class advisor asks if they can make Insuk leave her alone, and Psychic tells him that they have to find out how Insuk really died. Psychic continues the session and asks Insuk and Beauty's body not to run away, since she's trying to help her. The other girl holds on and takes her back to her memories. There, we find Insuk surrounded by her classmates, who are donning plastic bags on their heads to hide their identities while carrying torches. Much to her disappointment, Insuk singles out Beauty's mother also among them. So she tells her so-called friend that she doesn't have to hide because she knows. She attacks Beauty's mother and threatens to kill her. But then, someone places a plastic bag on Insuk's head. They call her a spawn of Satan as they circle around her. Someone steps forward and sets her on fire. They watch as she screams and rise on the ground. No one comes forward to help her. When Psychic opens her eyes, she's faced by Insuk's burnt self for a moment. Then Beauty comes back and convulses. Before the class advisor and Psychic can discuss the session further, art teacher calls the class advisor and asks for his help. He hurries to check on her and finds her passed out on her bed. When she gains consciousness, she falls toward the class advisor and tells him not to get too close to her. Despite her warning, the two become intimate, with art teacher initiating a tongue massage to him. The class advisor discloses to the village head what he found out about Insuk's death and reveals that Insuk has possessed beauty. He begs him to help. 
The village head admits that the entire village is guilty. No outsiders had ever lived in their village for generations, but in Suk and her mother insisted on staying. They were unwelcome at first, and everyone tried so hard to drive them away. But the men had fallen in lust with Insuk's mother. The village head admits that the mother had begged him to help her daughter, but instead of doing so, he had assaulted her, using her daughter as bait. But he wasn't the first, nor was he the last. Other people in the village took advantage of her, which is why the villagers allowed them to stay. However, everybody then turned their backs on them, when they realized that they can't keep it a secret forever. Insuk was killed by her peers, while the rest of the village burned down their house, with the mother still inside. Before her death, the mother curses the whole village for what they've done, and anyone else will try to leave the village. Back to the present, Psychic is sure that it's not Insuk who's harming the village, but she doesn't know who else it could be. Art teacher visits Psychic and shares that she's experiencing the same thing as Beauty, that there are moments where she can't remember what she did and what had happened. Psychic offers to hypnotize her and find out what has possessed her, and Art teacher agrees, wanting it to stop. After an intense hypnotic session, Psychic discloses to the class advisor that Art Teacher is actually the reincarnation of Insuk's mother, but he refuses to believe it. Psychic explains that the mother had incredible powers. Insuk was blind, but behaved as if she could see with her mother's help. This is the reason why the mother never left the house, because she became her daughter's eyes. Psychic continues that through beauty, she saw the mother when Insuk was dying. It turns out, Insuk's mother was inside their house when the villagers burned it down. She couldn't get out, because they were also burying her daughter at the same time. She tried to help her daughter, but failed. Then she ended up dying as well, when she was consumed by the flames. Back to the present, Psychic announces that even as the mother was dying, she was determined to bring Insuk back to life. The class advisor asks how. Psychic asks him if something happened between him and Art Teacher, which the class advisor denies. That night, the class advisor divulges that the village is getting tense, and he thinks it'll be best if he finds out what their plan is. He instructs Art Teacher to keep an eye on Beauty. But he doesn't know that Insuk's mother is getting stronger and has taken over Art Teacher. Beauty finally realizes that Insuk's mother has taken over Art Teacher's body, but it's too late. The mother then encourages Insuk to come out and take over Beauty's body so that she can bring her back to life. Beauty's former friends run up to the class advisor to inform him that there's something wrong with Beauty. They point him towards her. She's headed to the village hall where another village meeting is in progress. The village head is arguing with his fellow officials about their plan. The commissioner plans to encourage Beauty to commit suicide for the good of the village. The village head disagrees, and the commissioner tells him straight up that he better have anybody else to be sacrificed to save the village. The power cuts out, and gasoline is poured all over the floor. The village councilmen are alarmed. They find Beauty standing a few feet away. She throws a lit lighter onto the floor and burns them to death. Insuk, through Beauty's body, ends up killing the supervisor while Insuk's mother, through art teacher's body, kills the school principal, thus completing their revenge on all those who harmed them. The class advisor finds each of the dead bodies. He falls to the floor, shaking as art teacher walks out of the principal's office, covered in blood. She glances briefly at the class advisor and then calmly leaves the school. The class advisor is interviewed at the police station and is asked to kill the principal. He insists that it was Insuk's mother. The detective tells him that it's impossible, since her mother died 30 years ago. But a subordinate of his cuts him off to corroborate the class advisor's story. According to their forensics department, the fingerprints from the scissors used to kill a principal were from Insuk's mother. We see Art Teacher next at the beach, a little girl by her side, running and playing. The little girl calls her mom, and they have fun at the beach. The movie ends with the mother and daughter standing side by side. The camera pans closer, and the little girl turns back, smiling at first, then her face turns serious. It's the reincarnated Insuk. This is Daniel CC Movie Channel. Stay safe and enjoy your day.